Thank you for viewing this video from Learn Electrics. Today we will look at electrical disconnection times. In other words, how quickly a fuse or circuit breaker should disconnect an electrical circuit during a fault. The permitted time to disconnect from the electrical source and to make safe the circuit is very much dependent upon the voltage of the circuit and a few other factors. It is all about ensuring that an electric shock is survivable by an average healthy adult. All the information and numbers that we talk about in this video are from the wiring regulations BS 7671 18th edition. The question is, why do we need to know the disconnection times? The disconnection time, the time taken for a circuit breaker to cut off the electrical supply during a fault, is a big factor in someone surviving an electrical shock. The bigger the voltage, the bigger the danger of injury or death. And as you will see, as the voltage increases, the time to disconnect becomes more critical. If we know what the disconnection time should be for safety, according to the regulations, then there are tables that we can use that will tell us what the maximum ZS or loop impedance is for different circuits. If our circuit meets the requirements for ZS or loop impedance as it's called, then we should be confident that it will meet the required disconnection times. The lower the ZS, the quicker the disconnect times. So, now that we know why we have disconnection times, where do we get the information from? Let's start on page 58 of the 18th edition Wiring Regulations book. On page 58 you will find regulation 411.3.2.2. This tells us to use the disconnection times in table 41.1 on the next page. This is for final circuits with a rated current not exceeding 63 amps for a circuit with one or more sockets or not exceeding 32 amps for a circuit with fixed equipment. Here is table 41.1 and this table as we said applies only to final circuits. The next question is what is a final circuit? Well imagine a lighting circuit in a house. The cables that leave the consumer unit and go to the luminaires are the last part of the journey for the electricity from the power station to the point of use, in other words, the light. That piece of cable in the house is the final part of the journey. There are no more fuses or consumer units. This is the final leg. This is a final circuit. The sockets are the same, a final circuit. So is the shower, the cooker, and any other circuit that leaves the consumer unit and goes just to the points of use. It is a final circuit. Now, let us take a cable from the consumer unit into the garage and terminate this into a second consumer unit for use in the garage. The cable that connects the two consumer units is not a final circuit. There is another set of breakers to go through, the second consumer unit. This is called a distribution circuit. It is distributing electricity from one consumer unit to another consumer unit. The cables leaving the second consumer unit and going to the sockets or lights are final circuits as they now have no more circuit breakers to pass through. So we have final circuits, the last piece of cable to the points of use, and we have distribution circuits there are more circuit breakers down the line, more circuit breakers to pass through. If you want to know more about final and distribution circuits, we have a great video on YouTube called Electrical Final Circuits and Distribution Circuits. We will leave a link in the description of this video and it is well worth having a look after you've watched this video. Moving on. If the circuit meets the previously mentioned regulation 411.3.2.2 then it will be a final circuit and it will not exceed 63 amps for a circuit with sockets nor will it exceed 32 amps for a circuit with fixed equipment. We're going to use table 41.1 now for a few examples. First of all let's take a look at the table. 
On the left, highlighted in red here, we have a choice of earthing system, either TN for TNS or TNCS, and TT for those systems using earth rods or similar. At the top of the table, we have four voltage ranges to choose from, and it is important to choose the correct range. Within each range, we have a further choice of AC voltages or DC voltages. Staying with voltage ranges, let's look at the range 120 volts to 230 volts. The range uses some funny symbols that we must pay proper attention to. U0 is the nominal voltage to earth. In a domestic property, U0 is the nominal voltage between line and earth, which we call 230 volts. It is not the voltage you measure. It is the assumed voltage. We always assume 230 volts for all of our calculations, even if the circuit measures 240 volts. So this arrangement of symbols is saying to us, U0, the nominal voltage between line and earth, is greater than 120 volts and equal to or less than 230 volts. Greater than 120 volts means 121 volts or above. Equal to or less than 230 volts means anything up to and including 230 volts. The bottom part of the table, shown here circled in red, gives the disconnection time in seconds. Outlined in red on this slide are two entries that tell us to look at note one to this table. Because this is a DC voltage and it is up to 120 volts, it falls into voltage band one. This voltage band is extra low voltage and does not require protection to be provided against electric shock. At 120 volts DC, you are unlikely to receive a fatal electric shock. Let us use the table to work out a few examples and starting with example one, a domestic property is fed by a 230 volt TNS system. What is the disconnection time? Looking at the table, we can find the row TN for TNS on the left. At the top, choose the voltage range 120 to 230, since our nominal voltage does not exceed 230 volts. It is AC, so choose the correct column. Where the column and row meet is the answer. Here in blue, it is 0 0.4 seconds. Example two is another domestic property, but this time a TT system. Choose the row TT, choose the voltage range 120 to 230 again, AC again, and where the two cross is our answer. The disconnection time is 0 0.2 seconds. In this example, number three, this is for a commercial property fed by a three phase 400 volt TNCS system. 400 volts is the voltage between lines and this is called UL, not U0. U0 is calculated by dividing the line to line 400 volts by the square root of three. In other words, 400 divided by 1.732. This will give us 230.9 volts, which we round down to 230 volts. So for a 400 volt three phase system, U0 is 230 volts. The rest of the calculation is the same as before. Choose a row, choose a voltage range, and the disconnection time is 0 0.4 seconds. And the last example, number four, another commercial property, but this time with a 440 volt TNCS system. First, calculate U0 again. This time, the line to line voltage is 440 volts. 440 divided by 1.732 gives us 254 volts. 254 volts puts us in the voltage range greater than 230 volts, but less than 400 volts. And the answer you should get is a disconnection time of 0 0.2 seconds. 
Now we can look at circuits that do not meet regulation 411.3.2.2. The circuit is not a final circuit. Or it is a circuit with a socket and the circuit is greater than 63 amps. Or it is a circuit for fixed equipment that is greater than 32 amps. In this case, the disconnection time is very easy. If it is a TN system, regulation 411.3.2.3 applies. If it is a TT system, then regulation 411.3.2.4 applies. Regulation 411.3.2.3 for TN systems tells us the disconnection time is 5 seconds regardless of the voltage. And regulation 411.3.2.4 for TT systems tells us the disconnection time is 1 second regardless of the voltage. Here we have put the last few slides into one table. If regulation 411.3.2.2 is met, then we must use table 41.1. If regulation 411.3.2.2 is not met, then we must use 5 seconds for TN systems and 1 second for TT systems. Now that we know the disconnect times, we can find the maximum ZS for the circuit. And it is the ZS that we have to test when completing our electrical certificates. First, let us look at table 41.3 on page 62 of the wiring regulations. The top of the table tells us that this table is for BSEN 60898 circuit breakers and BSEN 61009-1 RCBOs. And it also tells us that it is 0 0.4 seconds final circuits and also 5 second distribution circuits. So it is the same table for any circuit using BSEN 60898 circuit breakers or BSEN 61009-1 RCBOs. That makes it easy. There's only one table to use for them. Now we can look at table 41.3 on page 61. This is for fuses and specifically for 0 0.4 second times and this implies that they are final circuits. Notice that fuse sizes shown do not go past 63 amps on this table. On page 63 we find table 41.4 and this is for fuses again but specifically for distribution circuits with 5 second disconnection times. And on this table, the fuse sizes do go past 63 amps. This little table should help you to visualise this. Decide if it is a final or distribution circuit on the left and choose a row. If it is a fuse, make your selection in the green column and find the ZS in the appropriate table shown. If it is a circuit breaker or RCBO, use table 41.3 to find the ZS. A quick recap then. Does the circuit meet regulation 411.3.2.2? If it does, then page 59, table 41.1 applies. If the answer is no, that it does not meet regulation 411.3.2.2, then refer to regulation 411.3.2.3 for TN systems or refer to regulation 411.3.2.4 for TT systems. And then, to find the maximum ZS for the circuit, refer to the tables on pages 61, 62 or 63. These tables all show tabulated figures. To find the measured values, multiply the numbers in these ZS tables by 0 0.8. This is what we call the 80% rule. And this is the ZS that you should measure with your test meter. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you have added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Please click on the like button below and by clicking on subscribe you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure 
that you don't miss our next weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us too and we do appreciate it and it does make all our effort worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. There is a companion article to this video on our website that can be read at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.